five, four, three, two, one. Please do not change channel. From Krypton Radio, brought to you by Famous Faces and Funnies and Off the Chain with Yvonne Mason. It's the Hanging with Web Show Radio Hour. The Internet's premier pop culture talk radio show. You're tuned in, you're logged on, and now, your host, award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pomacher. Who are you hanging with? Hello, World Wide Web, from laptop to mobile, from border to border, from coast to coast, and all the ships at sea. I'm G.W. Pomacher, and this is the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pomacher. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. Hit subscribe. Smash that button. Hit the little notification bell. You can come back over and over again. We've got artists, authors, filmmakers, comic creators, creative minds of all kinds. And right now, we have got Jason Spriggs and Mike Langendorfer. <laughs> really? <laughs> Would you I'm like to talk to your parents, young man? Would you like um, to buy a vowel? From, yeah. from, from Mr. Raygun. Mr. Raygun and Deuce. All right, guys. Um, well, let's start with Mr. Raygun. All right. So, when I was younger, I collected some comic books, some action figures. You picked, you picked one, you, one fascinator. One and you've fascinator. got every variation under the sun. Well... Which so, sun? There are many suns of which these, these come cosmic from. ray guns come from. Yes. And uh, yes, it wasn't necessary. I mean, I was like you. I had action figures and Lego and, and ray guns and, uh, and girls. And um, Wait, wait. But, you had action figures, comic books, ray guns, and girls? Yes, yes. We hate him. I was the unique dweeb. That's right. <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, yes. Well, I could tell you, but... Not on that there's there's a not secret. on this there's, there's, not on this platform. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so how do we get uh, already we're off the rails? We're way so, over here. Yeah. No, but the uh, the ray gun obsession really started a lot later because uh, as a child uh, with no form of income other than uh, meager allowance, you'd never be able to afford these. So yeah. you kind of have to be a grown up with a job uh, and uh, and a partner. If you want to know what grown ups with jobs do with their money. Ray stuff. guns. <laughs> pew pew. That's right. And speaking uh, of childhood, these these ray guns that we're collecting are far older than us. You know, these look like kind of classic toys. These, they, are, these are really classic. They are. They are. That's a that's the Astro Ray, uh, 1962. That came out. 1962. 1962. Um, this, and that what that one is is um, it's kind of neat. It's basically, it shot darts out of here, right? Oh, so, it's got the flashlight on the so end, though. So, boom. Right? Yeah. yeah, so you can poke your friend's eye out with the dart, and then you pull this trigger back here and then blind him with this light. So, very, very... Yes, that's pretty good. That comes right. in handy, right? Like, mostly, it takes him out. Safe. Most, yeah. Mostly safe. Mostly that's safe. That's what, uh, yeah, vintage ray guns, mostly safe. Um, <laughs> and, and then uh, this guy, this is, this is actual, uh, like, a, a European replica of a Remco, Remco ray gun, okay. and basically when it has batteries in it, it would make a really annoying oh, noise. Oh, yeah, so mom and dad and really hate you. Yes, exactly. And yeah, then they want to sell you. This little dial here, you can turn, uh, and the light will shine through and turn that different colors. Right? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So, like I said, originally um, a Remco, which was an American company, yep. uh, but then knockoffs all over the world. Of right? course, so, of course, yeah. And some are more uh, collectible uh, than others. Um, but um, what we, uh, yeah, the, so the obsession developed a little later in life, and then suddenly we went, well, we've got, let me see that one, we've got... Yeah, you got some really uh, interesting little... This one is what, what, particularly interesting. Okay, what is this it? This is the one that started it all. Uh, this this is, is the Buck Rogers XE31, 1934. This is the first ray gun that ever came out that was real. Wow. There's a cardboard one that came out previous to that. So this is Buck Rogers, 1934. Very first one ever. Okay, now, but yeah, Buck Rogers, by the way, is the, kind of the first space comic out there in 1928. Right. It was huge. There was so this is within six years you've got yeah, toys right. and merchandise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had lines forming around Macy's wow. and stuff to buy these um, back then. This was a wow. hugely popular toy for kids because it was a physical, a physical toy. They could imagine that they were now 
a Buck Rogers. They were they were a spaceman. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you had westerns. You had yeah. westerns are big, and you had the cap guns and you know revolvers and stuff. But right. you guys, you, you guys remember this. before they had this, though, you were outside and you were looking for the perfect shaped stick. Remember? Stick exactly. Stick right. the, yeah. The, yeah. You were I'm looking still for the perfect looking branch. for the, the perfectly shaped stick. Absolutely. Yes. That's a different show, though. But that's, that's a different show. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Well, what's this guy here? What do we got here? This is the. Uh, this is another Buck Rogers, which came out about ten years after uh, the first guy there, the XZ31. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the U235, okay. uh, atomic uh, pistol. That's the disintegrator. Atomic wow. pistol. Basically the same thing. It, it um, pops, Little makes pop, a pop okay. noise. And in here there would be a flint. That sparks. would activate and oh, so spark right. smart window. This ah. is one of ours that doesn't spark anymore, but it does still pop. This was made uh, very famous. It was on the cover of the Foo Fighters album. That's okay. right. Okay. Oh, that, that'd be, okay. Right. Very. So, okay. So you you started collecting. So we started collecting. Then it became an obsession. And then it became an illness. As collections do. Uh, yes, an illness. So I we looked around one day and thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to have this big coffee table? book of wow. photography, really nice photography of the guns. Um, and uh, now He couldn't stop with the guns, though. Right. Well, we thought, what else? Okay, so we got guns from the 1930s to the late 60s, early 70s. What else was popular around then? Pin-ups. Pin-up girls. So. It's true. In YouTube, it is true. There are two things that, that little guys like. Ray guns. Big guys, too. <laughs> and girls. Sure. Big guys, little guys, medium-sized guys, all of us, really. really. Pin-up girls and ray guns. Yeah. It seemed... That's a it winner. It didn't seem um, exploitive. It, it seemed kind of a natural thing. You know, I mean, you can take anything and just, just add girls. Uh, but uh, this seemed natural because pin-up was a legitimate... Yeah, it was an art form. Photography it really, really truly you know? was. So a trend. We, so we want this... Yeah, we don't want just any old cosplay girl just... Leotard and you know makeup you and stuff. That's really we want it uh, period accurate. Yeah. Okay. So if it's, if she's holding the 1934 uh, gun, then she's got a little swimsuit that's from that decade. That era. The okay. hair, you know, Very all cool. of that, and the makeup. So we're taking great pains to, to try and be accurate to that the is, times that from is awesome. the 30s to 60s. And also, there's there's a whole genre. If you look up sci-fi pinup. You would see that there's a tremendous amount of art that was very popular with um, in that genre, where you've got pinup girls, but they're they're in science fiction backgrounds and outfits with helmets. Wow. So we're also trying to, to pay homage to, to that as well and that tie is, it all together. So there have been fantastic. there have been ray gun books out there, very basic, not a lot of information. So our goal was to put out the most definitive book that's that's ever been done. On the topic. On the top, okay. With the most um, high quality pictures and the most variations of the pictures. Yeah, awesome. yeah those, those two other books, are great books. They came, right. One came out in 1991, it's called Zap. Okay. If you want to go look for that. Um, and another one called, just simply called Raygun in 1999. They're both great books. Um, uh, but they were they were limited. The, the okay. scope, it, there was a, it was just like a single um, Picture, profile yeah. shot. And then just a little bit of With who made name. it, okay. yeah, the name, you know, that right. sort of thing, yeah. and and that was about it. And we looked well, at now, those. Okay, so we talk. These are antique. Okay, yeah. this, this is this is not your. This, truly this is not you know, corner store five ninety nine ray replica. gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is an antique. What ranging in value? What do some of the antique ray guns? What, what I mean, it depends on a collector, obviously, but sure. yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah. What, what condition? What, and condition. Yeah. Okay. It's a very broad. It's a good question. It's a broad question, though, because. Um, you make okay. S something like this may cost you three hundred dollars, okay. four hundred dollars, depending on the condition. But then you might just get lucky, find it in an auction, okay. and you end up having a, a wonderful day by <clears throat> um, acquiring it for forty-one dollars. That happens sometimes. Okay. You know, I've got a couple. We've we've got some um, duplicates of the same gun because for the book. Which is coming out this uh, this year? Okay. Um, I I until we have the until we go to press, we are going to continue to photograph or acquire better versions of the gun. So gotcha, I, our gotcha. first our okay. first gun of this might not have been pristine, but it wasn't bad. We we photographed it. Photographs are beautiful. Larry Larry uh, Elliott is our photographer. 
And, um, but then we got another one, and then we got another one. Uh, and then one we just acquired uh, is uh, literally the cream of the crop. Wow. We, could, we, we don't need a better one than that to photograph. That is awesome. Yeah? So we've been doing that. So that, that, yeah, that adds now a bit Now, where of does time. one uh, acquire, typically speaking, a classic ray gun? Believe it or not, everyday eBay most of the time. Really? Pro, uh, auctions come, uh, come yeah. around monthly-ish, depending upon where. Sometimes certain auction houses may only have um, a vintage toy um, style auction a couple times a year. And they may or may not have ray guns in that. Okay. Um, and when they do, people generally flock. The good thing about those, they generally have very high quality, high value guns, mm -hmm. better versions of them. But you're going to pay um, a lot more. I mean, there are there are vintage ray guns out there that are literally thousands of dollars if you can find. I was going to say, what is the cream of the crop at ray? What is the goal, guys? What what is the ray there gun you've got to have? It. There's the a holy grail. grail of ray guns. There is. there is. What is that? It is called the pyrotomic disintegrator the pyrotomic disintegrator right. that's that just sounds cool yeah or dirty there's a um, reason it's uh they, there's a reason why it's so uh rare go ahead uh. they believe um that there are probably only 12 to 15 examples left in the world oh wow the reason is is that when they made it uh-huh it was made of such a cheap plastic that when a kid got it and was like ah and they would drop it it would shatter so wow. they didn't survive so um, there was so you only... had to find that one kid that was like, "This is cool. I'm going to put it up here on my oh, shelf." Yeah, yeah which... that kid's got one. Okay, um, what? See, this is why you don't don't never hire family. <laughs> okay, what? A, okay, so guys, okay, so classic ray guns from Buck Rogers, from mm -hmm. Flash Gordon, sure. right? Uh -huh. Okay, so I don't know why she wants to know this, but apparently. Is somebody making a toy version of the Martian, the Marvin the Martian ray gun from the 60s and 70s? Um, and what's that go for nowadays? That's a fair question. I don't know because I don't know who was who was marketing. Uh, that would have been uh, that would have been Hanna Barbera. Yeah, I don't know who did their but merchandising. I, I don't know. I'm not aware that anybody manufactured that back in the day. Now today, you can buy resin kits. Uh, no. at, at places like this. Yes. Um, that's kind of how I got... Make your own ray gun kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actually going to be doing some resin replicas of the hard-to-find guns because wow. if, if you didn't have $300 to buy this uh, on eBay or at our, our booth or whatever, um, we are going to be making replicas of some. That is awesome. They're great the for guns. cosplayers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And beginning know. collectors, which is how he started when okay. spending three or $400 for a toy seems outrageous. Maybe you'd spend eighty or ninety dollars for a replica, so you could have it in your kit or something. Strikes your usually what it is is dad. Well, I usually like, I, just, I usually think that if you're going to spend three or four hundred dollars on a ray gun at, <laughs> at our age, right? You want to make sure that you get the three or four hundred out before your wife gets it to go to the divorce lawyer. Yes, that's exactly true. <laughs> Here's an idea: buy the ray gun, ray gun first. <laughs> and I have to give a hat to hats off to Mrs. Ray Gun, who has Mrs. been ray gun. incredibly patient throughout this process. I it's mean, true story. The, these guns are all over the house, all over the place, and she seems to dig them. Uh, but I think mainly it's probably because she thinks we're going to make some money off the book. Uh, so possibly, uh, possibly. Look, I've, I've been, I've, I'm on my sixth uh, fiction novel. Oh, wonderful! So uh, I can tell you, don't tell her what you make. Uh, yeah. If she's yeah, because it's welcome to the arts. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. I will read that card if she makes me. We have to wrap it up, folks. As we do, we want to say thank you to our partners and friends over at Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida, Some Unique Magazine out of St. Louis, Missouri, Space Coast Comics, Jake Estrada, David Grace, and Chuck Fresh over there at Indie. Con and IndyCon 2019, J Bauer Art, Celestial Healings in Upstate New York, Krypton Radio out of LA, Radio.com, Pound the Grape in Melbourne Square Mall in Melbourne, Florida. I love that that list is so long now that yeah. I, I'm winded. <laughs> Once more in Latin. That's right. Yeah. And no. no, remember everybody, we've been hanging out with Jason Spriggs and Mike Langendorfer. Langendorfer. Okay, we've been hanging out with Mr. Ray Gun and Deuce here on the Hanging With Web Show. Remember, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Pew, okay. pew. Nice. 
Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. Every year, tens of millions of people flock to Florida for its sunny beaches and world-famous tourist attractions. Most never learn about the strange and unusual locations just off the beaten path. From the UFOs of Gulf Breeze to Robert the Haunted Doll in Key West, learn about the myths, monsters, and legends from the dark side of the Sunshine State. With author Mark Muncy and illustrator Carrie Schultz in their books, Eerie Florida and Freaky Florida from the History Press. Find them at eerieflorida.com or wherever books are sold. Devarius has lost everything. His parents murdered, his sister kidnapped, and the new village he called home destroyed. The Dragonia Empire is out of control, destroying anything and everything in their path, searching for the Resistance. Devarius is left with no choice but to find the Resistance, join them, and hope he can help them defeat the Dragonia Empire once and for all to bring peace to the land of Keldroga. Dragonia, Rise of the Wyverns, Dragonia Empire Volume 1. Joanne Fisher's The Spanish Doll. Secrets in Italy? Oh, yes. Her beauty strikes him like a thunderbolt sent by the goddess Venus. When Fiore is given a peculiar gift, a Spanish doll, she is thrown into a whirlwind of entangled passion, money, secrets, and love. Get swept away today by Hangin' with Web Show featured author Joanne Fisher's The Spanish Doll. Available now on Amazon.com. Log back on, tune back in, and keep hanging with us every Thursday night. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Palmisher. Thank you so much for logging on, tuning in, subscribing right now. Hit the button, hit the little bell, come back over and over again. I got artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, creative minds of all kinds right here on the Hanging With Web Show every single weekday morning. Right now, we're up pounding the grape in the Melbourne Square Mall, and we're hanging with musician, artist, Landon Nolan. Landon, how are you, man? Doing good, doing good. How's it going? It's going great, going great. Yeah, we just played uh, down in downtown Orlando for the first time by Lake Eola. Nice. Our first gig down there, really exciting stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we, were, we caught your first original music video. Yes. Out. We've been playing that up and playing the song. Um, you're... Um, you are at the precipice of an awesome journey, young man. Well, thank you. Thank How's it you. going so far? It's going good. You know, you I record a... a lot of my stuff from home. Uh huh. Um, we got a computer. We got you know a piano for it. All that stuff. I normally play piano, so it's really easy for me to, to kind of you know write the songs, compose them okay. on that platform because nice. you know you can see everything from there. It's like getting an aerial of, of an a song. aerial view of yeah, music. It is. It's very nice. That's a cool metaphor. <laughs> I had never heard that before. That's really awesome. Um, how long have you been playing? Well, I've been playing guitar for about a year and a half. Okay. I've been playing piano for You've about You've been playing guitar years. for one and a half years? Yes. Yes. He's an overachiever. In fact, on Facebook, I want you to start making fun of him. A Do year it. and a half. I, if I tried to start playing a guitar today, 73 years from now, I still wouldn't be as good as this kid. He started a year and a half ago. 73. How long have you been into music? Music, well... I was forced to take. And before you lessons. say how long you think that's going to be, <laughs> I can kill you on YouTube. They will actually laugh. They probably would. Yeah, I know so you people. You're sick. Okay. They are. They are. You, you got to watch these guys. So, um, so, tell, tell, how how old are you? I'm 16. 16. I hate him. Well, I'm turning 17 in a little under a month. Okay. He thinks that makes it better. He really does. Um, <laughs> How long have you been playing in general? How long have you been doing music? In general, well, I was forced to take piano lessons when I was six. I didn't really like it and like practicing or anything like that. Because you were six? Yeah, because I was six. I wanted to go outside and dig holes and like, you know, throw balls in the air. See yeah, six-year-olds <laughs> did that. Even just a decade ago, they still did that. Exactly. They didn't always have a... Michael got an iPod back there somewhere, what he's doing. Well, oh, I had a Game Boy, but I mean, the shovel was just so much more fun. <laughs> we had I love it when I stuff. can date them, even though he's young. <laughs> Game Boy. Haha. <laughs> yes, that was a thing. Look it up. Uh, nice. So, you started piano, six yeah. years old. Started piano at six, didn't really like it, then I quit, okay? And then 
I came back to it in seventh grade because we were going to go to a nursing home at my school. Okay. It was like an Alzheimer's unit, and uh, we were doing it around Christmas time. And so they wanted some music to be played, but no one knew how to play piano. And I didn't either because I didn't really learn anything when I was six. But I was like, you know what? I can play piano. And they're like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, I couldn't play piano. But I, I said I could. That's how and... this show started. I said, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just got to have that up. confidence. <laughs> that guy right there. I can, as far as you know. Um, so you, you started to back up again around junior high? Yes. Okay. yes. I started playing, and then we went to the nursing home. went kind of well. I was playing songs like Who's Crying Now instead nice. of Christmas songs. And so my teacher didn't really like it. But then the next year, we started doing computer projects in a class I was in. And I played all the music for it and stuff. And I just started experimenting, you know. I would get to school early when I went to Oviedo High School. And I would, I would play for like 40 minutes before the bell rang. And then soon enough, kids started coming in with me, coming to school early. And uh, we started singing songs and stuff. Uh, we, we would sing uh, My Way by Frank Sinatra every morning. Uh, Hurt by Johnny Cash. Yeah, a lot nice. of fun stuff. You know, They yes. were popular in the movies at that time, too. Because Logan came out and that uh, had Hurt in it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. All right. So, um... What made you decide you were going to take it to the next step? You take it to the next level? Well, uh, we went and saw Billy Joel in concert, and before I started singing, I thought singing was just weird. I would never sing. I you wouldn't would even hum sing. along to my favorite song. No, no. Okay. Nothing like that. And, you know, I would listen to bands like Muse So, Mom and, and stuff, Dad, they don't have like, a video in the car somewhere of you in the back seat? Maybe. Maybe when I was like three. Because when, okay. he, when he makes it to the big time, we're putting that on Facebook. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the video from a couple years ago when I st- first started singing would probably suffice. Okay, that would embarrass that, me that, enough. That, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's, you know. there's, there's one sitting on mom's phone. She's just waiting for the girlfriend to come over. She's got that one video. It's like, yeah. She's just waiting. It's just waiting, <laughs> waiting. Send. There it is. She's going to airdrop it. <laughs> no words will be spoken. <laughs> no words will be spoken. Welcome. Whoop, there he is. Um, so uh, when did you start performing out and about? Performing out and about, uh, my first performance out was on Valentine's Day of uh, 2016, I believe, and it was at Bahama Breeze. Okay. And um, I got to play for like a ton of people. I just played piano at the time. I played um, The Promise by Win and Rome on the piano. Nice. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, it was very nice. And, um, you know, li- little songs like that, you know, adapting things. You have a gift because to be able to take that and go from ignoring your teacher in, at eight, seven and eight. <laughs> to you know, junior high, trying to get back into it again. And then now, we've heard you play online. It's fantastic. Oh, You're thank amazing. You, thank you. Um, for a guy that doesn't like to sing, you have a fantastic <laughs> voice. Thank you so much. So, um, you're out there doing it, man. You're, you're at 16 years old, 17, going on 17 years old. Yes. You're out there, you're performing in venues. You're out there performing wherever you can, wherever they'll listen to you. Exactly, I've played at Rock and Brews finally. Got That's to play cool. Rock and Bruce Oviedo. Right when I started doing music, I told my uh, mom and dad, they're sitting over there, and um, they were like, oh, man, this place is really cool. And we saw a band play there. I was like, you know what? I got to play here. Nice. And a year later, I finally made it. What's the goal? What, what, what is, the, what is the, the, the next level for you? What next is, level? Yeah, where do you want to play? What do, would, is there a venue you want to play? Yes. Is it, what is it? I would love to play Ace Cafe Orlando. <clears throat> I would love to play there. <laughs> Ace Cafe Orlando. Yes. He wants to play there. We can hook you up. Just leave a comment down below. He does. He wants to comment. I can see him. He's like, you haven't heard him play yet. You got to go listen to him play. Um, song, okay, I like this one. This is okay. always a fun question. Okay, so we like to check our musicians. Sure. What's on your playlist? What's the top five on your playlist? Oh, man. What's on your, what's on, on your iPod oh, at home? On my playlist? Yeah. Okay, well, what are you listening I listen to? to a lot of funny songs, and I listen to them enough to where I start taking them seriously. Uh, what is Love by Hathaway? That's a good song. Um, okay. <laughs> saw that in a movie. That was, that was, that was cool. Night at the Roxbury. Saw <laughs> that in a movie. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let him keep talking. Another Look, song I'm over I really here. Like. Saw that in a movie. He's all the way we, we heard that on the radio, remember? Yeah. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, another song I really like is, uh, what, what's a good one? Hysteria by Muse. Muse okay. is probably my favorite band. I really like U2, though. Okay. And I have to say my favorite album from them is probably War. Wow. It's a really good album, us. What's it? Yeah. New Year's Day. It's mm-hmm. a really good song by them. Um, what's it? Ooh. I forget the name. It's like... I forget the name of that song. It's on the same album, though. We'll put it down below. Yeah, yeah. We'll put it down it. below. We'll put it down below in the link so I'll you can find that. Ones. So, you know, worst thing that can happen to a musician. You're okay. on your way to a gig. You're in the car. Yes. You turn the radio on just to see what's there. 
something gets stuck in your head. You get an earworm. Okay. It's there. What song is that? Ooh. What song is it? It's just stuck in your head, and you're like, oh, God, I got to get that out of my head before I perform. It'll mess me up, yeah. Yeah. It will. Hmm. I'd have to say... 180,000 professional musicians out there, they want to know which one of them is driving you insane. Driving me insane? Yeah. Well, when I turn on the radio, I turn on the classics. So, like, 105.9, like, Sunny FM, that sort okay. of stuff. Yeah. I say any song by, like, Journey just gets stuck in my head. And it's there. Whenever, yeah, like, Don't Stop Believing. They play it oh, so much. Oh, man, that would, yeah, that would actually That would it. get stuck in my head, and it's like... Yeah, yeah, you have to drill it out, or yeah. else you can't play. Exactly. Because you'll start playing, all of a sudden, you'll be playing it. You'll be thinking it before you be thinking before it, you even it, do it, and then yeah. it'll happen. Wow, oh, crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, what's the last song got stuck in your head? You were just kind of singing it around the house, singing the shower, okay. driving mom and dad crazy with it. Ooh, we actually had one that I said, oh, I'm going to learn this one, but we actually couldn't remember what it was. We remember the whole conversation, but we couldn't remember the song I was going to learn. <laughs> we're still trying to figure it out. I don't think he learned it. I didn't. I don't think he learned it. Because <laughs> he couldn't remember what it was. Exactly. Uh, you ever get a song, you, 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 you hear a song on the radio, you want to learn it, you're like, I want to know what that song is, yes. but you've got the refrain or something stuck in your head, you can't remember the title of the song. Exactly. Yeah. That's what happens most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you start calling it all kinds of weird stuff, and people, yeah. are, and people agree with you. You guys on the internet, you, they agree with you, like, yeah, I like that song too, and you're like, what the hell's it called then? Exactly. Because I made up that name <laughs> five minutes ago. You type it into Google and kind of look through the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. But then there's like a hundred other songs with the same the lyrics. Same exact lyric, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same like, phrase. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so uh, we have your single. Yes. What are you working on next? Are you writing? Are you doing any writing, uh, oh, of your own writing? I'm I know you're doing a lot of covers. <laughs> I know you're doing a lot of covers in your yes. performances, but are you working on anything original right now? Anything original? Absolutely. Right now I'm working on getting my first mini album out there. It's an EP. Um, we don't know what it's going to be called yet. But we've got some songs on there. We've got a song called uh, Snowman, Something to Run From, and uh, Haunted By You. It's going to be three songs, and I think they're three killer songs. They're very nice. I'm awesome. very, very proud of them. So I think you guys will really like it. Be sure to check it out. LandonNolan.com right. sometime next month. We're going to put links down <laughs> below so you can find Landon online. You can find him in the social media feeds. Check out the videos he's already got out there. Check out the performances. He's playing live. If you guys are out there, you're, you're hanging with web show fans. You're probably Kitchen Killers fans. After the Kitchen Killers show... Go on over to land this page. He's playing. So it's like a whole night. You can spend a whole night with our community. You'll have a blast. And you can text and everything, and he'll talk to you once in a while when he's not singing. Okay, fine. She's going to wave that card. We have to finish it up. Fine. We're going to thank our partners and friends at Something Unique Magazine in St. Louis. We're going to thank our partners at Space Coast Comics, Jake Estrada, David Grace, Famous Faces and Funnies right here in Melbourne, Florida. Author Yvonne Mason at Off the Chain Radio over on Blog Talk Radio. Pound the Grape right here at the Melbourne Square Mall. Josh Bauer at J. Bauer Art. The Brevard Renaissance Fair. And all of you who are sharing these videos all over the World Wide Web. Remember, everybody, keep tuning in. Keep logging on. See who we're hanging with next. Thanks, man. Awesome. Great Thank job, you. man. Thank you.
Amazon.com. War Calls, Love Cries, a Civil War novel by Mark Berry. Isaac Wells is an innocent farm boy living in upstate New York. His dreams are shattered by a treacherous brother and the onset of a devastating civil war. War Calls and Love Cries is a fast-moving historical narrative. It is an emotional roller coaster ride and a riveting must-read book that you will think about and talk about for a long time to come. War Calls and Love Cries is the kind of book you will cherish for a lifetime on Amazon.com today. From some of today's best-selling, award-winning authors comes 22 page-turning tales, Cursed Lands. Cursed Lands will lead you through one doomed world after another in a haunting dystopian urban fantasy. Join the courageous as they battle for survival across worlds where fae, vampires, angels, witches, and more roam freely. Cursed Lands is coming soon on Apple Books, Kobo, and Nook. Pre-order your copy for just 99 cents today. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available today. Murder by the Gods is a mystery thriller set in the glorious past of ancient Egypt. When the son of the Scorpion King suddenly collapses after receiving a mysterious threat from the god Seth, the prince is convinced it is the gods who are trying to kill his family. Murder by the Gods is filled with adventure and romance in a kingdom that would become known as the Land of the Pharaohs. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available on Amazon.com today. From the imagination of author Kevin J. Kessler, the Rosinani dragons are no more. They have fallen into the obscurity of lore. Now warrior Valentine Beret and Seraphina, a magically gifted princess, are on a mission to save the world of Terra. Together they must face the Rosinani legacy and combat the greatest threat their world has ever known. In the end, who is stronger, the man or the dragon? Find out in Kevin J. Kessler's The Rosinani Series on Amazon.com today. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging with the Web Show. I'm G.W. Palminger. We are at Fandom Kissimmee in Kissimmee, Florida. Yes. That's right. And we're hanging out with our good friend and artist, Josh Bauer. Josh, how are you, man? Good, man. How are you? Yeah. You know, this is not true. No. This he is why. He is not Tom. No. And he is not Dan. No. He's Josh. Yes. Bauer. <laughs> now you know. Yes. How you been? I'm good. Yeah. yeah. You doing, what are you doing these days? I mean, you got you're doing art. Yes. Doing uh, art. You just came from a charity event. I did. I just got here from a charity event about 20 minutes ago for uh, Tom and Dan. Uh, we were putting together a uh, kick uh, celebrity football tournament, and it was raising money for Yellow Brick Road. Wow. It's a uh, foundation that helps raise funds for uh, kids with uh, heart defects, and what they do is um, they build these wagons. They're, they're huge. They're like 70-pound wagons. Wow. And what it lets the kids do, you, uh, the kids that are really sick, they can put them in the wagons, put all the IVs, everything on around them, and just take them wherever they want through the hospital. So That's they're not fantastic. stuck in their bed the whole time. They can go nice. visit family. They can go outside. Um, so, yeah, um, you, those usually run about 1000 bucks. so we were raising money for that. And then Tom and Dan, uh, a mediocre time with Tom and Dan, the podcast, They've raised so much money and helped out Yellow Brick Road so much that they just announced that they're doing, uh, uh, what do you call them, scholarships for the oh. kids that have gotten, you know, been able to get better, live through the, yeah. everything and get through and get them to college. That's they're now starting fantastic. doing scholarships for those kids. That is awesome. Very awesome. Well, you know, we've been catching uh, your artist weekly updates. Yes. Yes. You're doing more and more. Yeah, I'm trying to do one every week. Uh, it's every Thursday around 7:30. Okay. Um, I hop on. They were supposed to originally do like five to ten minutes. Now they've become uh, at least 40 minutes because I'm always doing so much in between each week. Uh, usually I start off with talking about what I've worked on that week, either some commissions, some paintings, whatever's going on that week. Uh, and then I go into what I'm going to be working on the following week. 
and then I go into like the, the last couple of weeks has been building up the Tom and Dan charity event I did the painting so for them friends. Be that kind of thing. yeah like updates yeah. on conventions and things like that who I'm working with and then uh, at we the saw end you just upgraded a bunch of equipment yes so you're, yeah. yes um, <laughs> that's been fun uh, thanks to Amazon I Amazon we love you yes yes all of us out here on the web that are trying to you know share art with yeah. you yeah yeah. If it wasn't for Amazon, I think we'd all be like, oh my God, where do I go to get that? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's been an experience. I got the, the light, I got like one of the small square lights, I think it's bright, don't look directly at it, it'll blind you. So I'm getting, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting used to that now because I have my camera in front of me and then the light right behind it. Oh, so it's yeah, like yeah. staring right at me. But it makes everything look really nice. It does. I got the, uh, the mic so you can hear me a little bit better. Nice. Uh, I found out the hard way for Android phones, so you have to get a special adapter for your phone. You can't plug it right in. Nope. So you have to get this adapter that comes out. Uh, one phone goes in, two come out, and one's for the mic and one's for the headphones. Yes. So yes. I got that cord last night, did some testing on that. Um, it sounds great, except for a little bit of static, so I'm still trying to figure that out. And then hopefully I will have the fancy stand for everything sometime next week. Very cool, very cool. Um, we uh, Every week you can check out uh, at Josh Bauer on YouTube. Yes. Uh, you can search for Josh Bauer. You can search for JB Designs. Correct. With a Z yep. D E Z I G N S. Yep. Uh, so JB Designs. Or just type in Artist Weekly Update. And it, it's coming around. It shows up in there. JB yeah, Designs. it's getting there. I'm up to number, uh, I think it was 12. This there week. you go. Very yeah, cool. So very cool. There. And uh, Josh is just really. Th- started to do this in earnest on YouTube. Yeah. So get on over there and give him a subscribe, guys. Uh, it's it easier to find him. Easier to find him. Oh, yes. Once you get him 100 subscribers. Yes. You. Yeah. You and you and you and that guy in the that back. Guy over there. Him. Watching him. You guys hit the subscribe button. We'll get Joshua 100. They'll give him his own vanity euro. Yes. And, and I'm doing a giveaway own. once I hit 100. You're going to give it away. Do yeah. I'm doing, uh, I think it's like five or six mini prints. Right. Uh, Unsubscribe, Dean, uh, Sage, so we can be the hundred. <laughs> Want to get? I'm actually friends. doing it a little bit differently. Okay. I'm going to take the entire list of a hundred nice. and randomly pick one. Very good. And they'll Very get a good. set of special prints, and one of them you will never be able to get. It's uh, the Stitch City that I've done. Oh wow! Um, it's a mini print of it. It's about this big, and you will only be able to get that through this giveaway. That's awesome. So get over there and subscribe to Josh Please. Flowers' YouTube channel. Get him to a hundred, guys. He's going to get to do a giveaway. Get him way past 100. Yes, that would be really You guys great. really want to know. He shows you what he's been working on, what he's working on right now, mm-hmm. where he's going to be. I also do some live paintings every so often. You can watch me create the things. Watch him create. I like doing that anyway because I have zero artistic skills <laughs> in my hands. So watching Josh just blank canvas and all of a sudden stuff. Oh, yeah. It's magic I don't understand. Sometimes I don't even get it either. There's like, right now I'm working on... You can on actually see that on YouTube. His face is like, whoa. Oh, oh. That, yeah. It, it's, it's a revelation. I'm working on a new fairy at the moment with uh, Bree Bree Cosplay. Awesome. And uh, she's going to be one of my fairies. She's on a swing and she's got like this nice dress. And I went and I'm like, oh, I'm going to paint uh, Friday night. Come check me out and everything. And then I sit down and I go, I haven't even decided a color yet. So I just start doing... <laughs> I did the, uh, oh, the face color, the splash. Awesome. We sat, uh, we had the, the good fortune to go and film um, Fritz von Eaton. Uh, oh, he, okay. was here in, he was here in the country. And uh, we did a little interview with him for a museum that was going to feature his work. And he was doing a piece. Mm-hmm. And it started with a blank canvas. Oh, wow. He was doing the interview. He was looking at me. No. And his brush. Oh, come on. <laughs> I swear to God. His, his brush was over here. When he got done, there was this gorgeous flowing piece. Uh, and I'm like going, I don't even know if he saw what he was doing. Right? It right. just was going. It's the way art works. You, yeah. It's the way you... You're, There's always getting better. There's always striving for and more and getting to that point. And how you process yeah. where your hands are and your motions. Yep. And so watch it happen to Josh. You're going to watch his process from concept to what's done, what's going to be done. Oh, yeah. You know, watch that over on the YouTube channel. Check that out. She's got that card back there that says we have to wrap it up. So we're going to say thank you to our partners and our friends at Some Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Pound the Grape in Melbourne, Florida, Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. We thank Josh Bauer for coming and hanging out with us a little bit. Thank you. We're here at 
fandom Kissimmee in Kissimmee, Florida. And uh, while you're here right now, hit subscribe. Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is after the video ends, you want to go over to Josh Bauer's channel yes. and subscribe there. Double subscribe. Double subscribe. Yes. You can catch Josh Bauer on Josh Bauer on YouTube. We're going over to the ICN Web TV Independent yes. Creators Network, where he is being featured as uh, one of the YouTube channels that is uh, is there. So subscribe. All, just spend some time on YouTube. Quality time. Check out some fantastic artists. In the meantime, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Good? Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book. The Pink Canary, a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's gonna kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. The Right of Wands. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Right of Wands ceremony, Mirda must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. But Mirda is not the only one with secrets. The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. Available on Amazon.com now. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Club Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellished Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellished Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Or go to EmbellishedEffects.com. And remember, cosplay is for everyone. How you doing, everybody? This is KG Bethlehem. I'm an author of a new book called Certain Moments of Time. It's a collection of short stories. These short stories range from post-apocalyptic, dystopian, anti-utopia, as well as general fiction. You can find Certain Moments of Time on sale at Amazon.com, where you can purchase the ebook format as well as paperbook format. You can also purchase it at Lulu.com, paperbook format, and will be on sale soon at BarnesandNoble.com. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I am G.W. Pomacher. I'm Christian Basil. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, and we are here at Central Florida Comic Con in Lakeland, Florida. We've been here all weekend long. We've been hanging out with some great authors, artists, musicians, filmmakers, comic book creators, creative minds of all kinds. And we are here right now talking to writer Glenn Turner, the co-writer of The Coming Future. Yes, sir. You are writing the future. Dude, it could be. All I need to know: next Saturday's lottery numbers. Or are you? Have you started well, after that? I'm are not we... willing to split. No, okay. It's I got it. exclusive on that one. Yeah. I, I, I respect. I it. already have to worry about the people coming to me afterwards. Yes. And now I'm. Co I got people coming to me beforehand. Yeah, That's, yeah. But you know, you're, wait, you're co writing you're, you're, the coming future. There are lines, and yeah, that line can't cross it. Know. So it's if you're a millionaire, process. it doesn't matter. You build, you know, strong houses, walls, and all that if stuff. If I had a million away. dollars, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'd, I'd buy your love. But anyway, the coming future. Wait for it. There it is. Okay. okay. The coming now, future. Uh, right. The coming future, man. Let's talk about that. Right. Okay. Um, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> uh, it started a couple years ago. A friend of mine and I, Angel uh, Torres, the co-writer, we were working together in a doctor's office in Plant City, Florida. And uh, I like to write a lot. He liked to write a lot. I think I was doing, um, in May, they do uh, Nano Write Month or something like that. Nano I forget what it's yeah. called. Nano and so I was cranking through a book. That, that is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a challenge yeah. that comes in November uh, generally. It, yeah. They do it throughout the year now. Yeah. But it's basically a novel writing in a month challenge. Yeah. Write a novel in a month. And so that's one of, it's another book series is in my back pocket that, that I don't know if I'll ever publish it or not, but so I uh, was doing that one month and he said, oh, you like to write? I like to write too. And so Angel and I collaborated a little bit and after talking, he said, let's write a book together. And I said, sure, what the heck? And so we started writing. Okay. So give us the book blurb. What is this book, book about? Book blurb. Um, so The Coming Future is about a kid named Alec who begins having visions of a catastrophe coming. Uh, nobody believes him because he's 13 years old. As one does. Yeah. And then it happens. What, you, that doesn't happen to you? Well, then the disaster happens, and all of a sudden he's stuck in the middle of a 
you know, trying to repair the city after it's been damaged, figuring out who caused the disaster, why it was there, and, and trying to save the day and still find a date to prom. Which is always, really, saving the world after a calamity is probably easier than finding a prom date sometimes. For people like me, yes. And I think that correct. sometimes they're the same thing. <laughs> if you really think about it. You know, Depends I should have had, exactly. yeah. had that line when I was in high school where I could just say, we need to go to prom together, it'll save the world. Yeah. <laughs> would have worked. So, yeah, the, uh, uh, would that have worked? What, what, no, what, okay. What was the comedian said? He said, like, if we're the last two people on the planet, we need to repeat, we repopulate the species. Would you at least consider it? <laughs> no. Okay. It didn't work for me. I'll tell didn't you. work. Yeah. Well, not us. I'm not talking about us. <laughs> well, we'll, <laughs> that's it. I am wearing a skirt. Don't worry about the math on that. Back Don't to worry the future is coming. All. He's wearing so a Back kilt. to the future yeah. coming. Okay. So, um, all right. The obvious question. You're all going to ask it anyway. The kilt. What's up? Well, the book is... No, I don't want the kilt up. No, no. Don't put the kilt up. Tell us about the kilt. Okay. What is I, I up with the kilt? I do have a Scottish-Irish background. Okay. Uh, my grandmother's descended from Scotland. Uh, uh, no, it's just, she it's was just... the legal immigrant of the group. We had a couple of illegal ones, too. But, um, so, yeah, I know, I know. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, she... So I just always had that background. Okay. Um, I got married in the kilt. Does this tartan have any uh, significance? This one, I think, is just the standard black watch hunting tartan. Okay. Uh, right. it's, I think this is a standard one. I had my clan tartan, but I grew out of it because I got fat after I started sitting at a desk for eight hours a day. We're writers. The, yeah. the biggest challenge we have is exercising something more than this and these. Well, see, I work at a doctor's office, and people bring you food all day. They just oh, say, gotcha. hey, here's, here's a Snickers bar. Write my drug. And so, yeah, it's... Does so it I got work? That. Yeah, it... Um, nah, I don't know. Nah, nah, we won't go there, but... Nah, whatever. So. Uh, okay, man. So, um... You, so you're co-writing The Coming Future with co-author who is... Angel Torres. Angel Torres. Yep. Yep. And, um... You have a novel kind of idea that's in your back pocket. Oh yeah, I, so we have, I have a ton of ideas. That a ton of ideas. I'll get there someday. You know, it's. I mean, I, I have. Um, now the the coming future's out there. Yeah, coming future's out. The okay. second one, the coming the future's out world. There. Nice. Yeah, the future is out, <laughs> the future is out, is out there, there, but the coming nice. world is the coming, coming world is still coming. Yes, uh, I sent in the edits last night to the editor, the publisher. Um, Sage knows I'm pulling out innuendos in here right now. Yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's I okay. got a lot of. I'll drop them out. Half of what's in the book is just little innuendos about stories or other movies or songs or wrestling or just silly Which stuff. Which for a lot of writers is the fun of writing it and is. for a lot of readers is a great time mm -hmm. yeah. because you're always trying to figure out what exactly we were from? thinking about yeah. at the time. From? And especially in this community. I, I once wrote, uh, in one of my novels, I have a, a pair of magicians, Festus and this. Pair of magicians. They're a pair of, of magicians. magicians. Because Festus a paramagician would be weird, because the magician's already kind of para. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but uh, no, and that was on the day was Festivus, and so that's how I did, you know. So that's little nice. stupid stuff like that. It just comes up. And, very cool. Very yeah. cool. It's always a lot of fun to throw our pop culture references into. Yeah, it's the a fiction. Yeah. So um, you're here at Central Florida Comic Con. How's, yeah. it, how's how's this con going for this you? This has been a good one for us. I, I like it. It's a little smaller, but it's big enough that there's still enough stuff going on. There's a lot of people. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But because it's smaller, it, it has that feel like you can take more time yeah. with the person across the table from you. Yeah. When they come over, to, you can talk about the books, you can talk about your process and what you're working on. That's yeah. a lot of fun. It has been really neat. And, um, you know, we, we've done one or two other cons. We've only been out for less than about a year or so. The book has been out. So we're getting our feet wet trying to figure out what the heck we're doing. And what how are readers saying to you? Uh, they, they call it kind of a cross between Harry Potter and uh, Chronicles of Narnia. Um, with the scene punk overtones. That's some fairly high praise. Yeah. Those, those, are, those, those did okay. I heard about those. Yeah, I, I had to look one of them up. Um, the, the one that he didn't mention yet. Yeah. He looked that one up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You can look any of them up, but just be sure that you look up the coming future. Yes. Please do. Find that. Uh, check that out. Um, what's coming? Now you have the coming so world coming, coming in the out. The coming world will what's be out up? probably within the next month or two. Okay. It's a, it's a pentology, so there's going to be five books. Uh-huh. Uh, we're flirting with the idea of having a couple of shorter, you know, 10, 20,000 word novelettes come out okay. in between the books, just showing some of the background. It's a big of, thing right now. There's a huge trend out there for kind yeah. of the, somewhere between a short story and a novelette yeah. that is a nice straight read. People can get on the bus and read it on the way to work or yep. whatever. People, there's a huge trend that uh, a lot of uh, writers have, have told me. I, I'm still doing novels because I'm not that smart, but... 
a lot of writers have told me this is the novelettes and these little short stories are doing huge things. Yeah, that's what I just heard myself. And so we're like, yeah, we've well, I wanted to do some stories like this anyways. So uh, we're playing with those ideas. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, well, let me tell you, you know, writers are weird. It's like, like <laughs> wow, gee. we are. Is we're, that just because I'm wearing a kilt that you say that? Yes. I love this yes, confessional all of a sudden. Uh, out of writers are weird, you know, because we have, we have, we have there's certain things we have to have. I, like, I need, I need quiet. I need my office to be my office. If anybody comes in, is, it needs to die. I mean, so it's like there's a poison smell I'm glad about Sager D. walk there. in. What do you do with the bodies? This is the problem. <laughs> when they die, if they fall inward, you are obligated to move them, which takes away from the writing. It does. If they fall well, outward, you, you just, just close the door. store them for late, later. If they fall outward, you close the door and pretend they're not there. Uh, if they fall inward, you're screwed. Oh, door. Now, door. writing, but you, you, need, you, know, you need a place to write. We need a way to write. Do you have any writing rituals that you kind of go through? Um, it Gotta have, I have to have the coffee. I'm, I'm literally, I'm the traditional, the guy that they that they make fun of in the, in the magazines. I have my coffee here, my ashtray here, and my keyboard going yeah. at it. So how about you? What do you got? It depends on where and when I'm writing. Um, I, uh, if I'm writing at home, I have a back patio. There's a nice little, you know, there's a, a drainage ditch that we call a pond in the backyard. Very and, nice, you know, very nice. It, it's kind Florida of nice. is wonderful oh, for is providing uh, ambiance. Yeah, good ambiance area. Yeah, you know, a cup of coffee or a, a cup of bourbon, one or the other, uh, depending upon the time of day. I do a lot of writing. Don't, uh, don't tell my boss, but I do a lot of writing at work. I work at a walking clinic. And so um, I, I work in, you know, medical stuff. And so half the day, if there's no patients, I'm writing. All right. So I, I, this is not a disclosure issue, and your names no. will not be mentioned. However, <laughs> I have to ask: You're writing. You're putting something together. You're, are you ever drawing inspiration or, or from my or patients now. from your patients or the doctors or your nurses, or people working around no, you? No, I, I haven't much. Um, some of the characters in our book, and in the coming future in the Alec Collins pentology, they are designed off of folks that my co-writer knows. Like, okay, yeah, he showed me a picture of him and said, like, "What do you think when you see this kid?" And I think, you know, that kid looks like a loner. Looks like, you know, she's kind of shy. He goes, and then he showed me another picture of her, and I'm like, "Oh, she's vibrant all of a sudden. Something happened. Something changed." And so. You can create a story it, what, know, between picture one and picture two. That's yeah, great. And, and a lot of a lot of the um, a lot of the kids you'll see, you'll be like, oh, you know what? That kid sat next to me when I was in high school. Okay, so you know? um, uh, in terms of, of uh, age bracket for your, for these books, are see, these YA? Are these adult? Yeah, it's YA. It's a young adult novel, um, but just like Harry Potter is enjoyed by you know adults too. I mean, the first person who gave us a, uh, an Amazon <laughs> review was six. Funny, he says that all the people on YouTube were like. Really, Harry Potter's enjoyed by adults. Number one, we're at a convention right now. <laughs> if you don't know what house you're in and you're walking through this room, bad things are going to happen. Because <laughs> everybody's going to ask you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know what? She's asking. She's what asking. Is yeah, what asking? Yeah. You know, I debated a lot. You know, I kind of feel a little Hermione like. I'm probably a Ravenclaw. I'm but a I kind of ended feeling. up in the. You know, in, I'm getting a Ravenclaw feeling. You know, but when we talk about getting a date to prom, I kind of felt like a Hufflepuff. Roger that. I understand. Yeah. So you know, I understand. Although I think I did end up marrying a cheerleader, so I guess it kind of works out eventually. After a while, they figure out that we're not that bad. It took, it took I until I was 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was 10 years Doesn't later. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to call it a win That's for right. the community. <laughs> okay? So we've been hanging with writer Glenn Turner, the co-writer of The Coming Future. Uh, we're going to put links down below so you can find The Coming Future over on Amazon, wherever you're going to look for books, okay? In the meantime, we're going to thank our partners and our hey, friends. Man, I, Christian. Say, I know you've had a lot of... Uh, You've been talking a lot this weekend. I do, you have. do you mind if I take no, this? No, 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 please thank those people. We want to thank our partners and friends, Summon Unique Magazine, Famous Faces of Funny, Space Coast Comics, J. Bauer Art, Celestial Healings, our friends at Krypton Radio, Radio.com, and Pound the Grape. He just did Pound the Grape. I did Pound the Grape. He's very emphatic about that. Guys, check out the links down below. Get all over. Here. Check out Glenn Turner. Check out The Coming Future and The Coming World. Yep. And, and anything Not else that's women. coming. Trials and fires and wars and oh my. oh my oh <laughs> my all right ladies and gentlemen remember to log on tune, tune in, in and see, see who we're, we're hanging with next thank you thank so you much sir. Man. that's awesome thank you
path of terror is infirmed. I come to heal in a way so surreal, and verily I say I'll cure on my terms. So bring me your sick or your barren young maids, or even a pox-ridden son of a whore. I will buy elixir of thunder egg root, for mine is the tea of both legend and law. Bring me your sick and diseased and gone of your ailments you all shall be. Drink up mandragora to cure all your strife. It's truly a wonder I swear on my life. It's every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, so tune in and log on and keep hanging with us. Mm. 